Thank you. Thank you. Hey, um, what am I going to talk about? Of course, devil is in the data. So I'm going to talk about data. And uh, I started working in wind industry, not energy, but in wind industry particularly, back in 2011. Uh, and I went along doing my PhD for five years without actually using the terminology big data. And I was working with turbine data, a lot of it. Uh, but when I started working in Greenwide, what I realized is that now everyone talks about big data. What happened? Did the data get bigger? Or uh, I don't know. Well, so I'm, I try to look into this question, or I will try to answer, or at least in my perspective, what has happened over the years. Why has data become so big and interesting now? And how do we see, at Greenbyte at least, this data helping our customers in the digital transformation of their businesses? Um, again, I'm a data scientist. I love machine learning. AI is something that I'm not really happy about when people use it very loosely. But I also want to understand what are the expectations of you, of our customers, of people working in the industry when it comes to AI and uh, machine learning. I will go through that. Um, and of, what are the pitfalls? When we think about these things, it's really nice when you look at the output that you get from the system. But if you are to develop this system from scratch, what should you be aware of? And what are we at Greenby doing? And how can we be partner uh, for you in uh, enabling you to have this digital business transformation. OK. So now, in 1997, that was basically, I was back in India, and I didn't even know what the internet was, uh, because we didn't have it back then. So if we look at the, the amount of data that is, uh, this is the internet traffic from 1997 to 2017. Uh, and we have uh, the amount, you can see that it has been almost an exponential growth in uh, 20 years. And today, every day, we are creating about 2.5 quintillion bytes of data. An estimate says that uh, almost 95% of the data that exists today has been created in the past two years. So if we put things in perspective, then we can understand why data is becoming so much more important today than it was, let's say, five years ago. There exists a lot of data. And now people are understanding that there is value in the data. So as you owners of your assets, you want to consider data as an asset also. And when you are talking about an asset, you want to know, uh, how can I get benefit from it? And that is what people are asking now. So that's why I feel, or we at Greenbyte feel, that uh, data has become that much more important when it comes to business operations. Now, this is uh, digitization, digitalization, dig digital transformation. These are terminologies that have been used quite recently. And sometimes they are a bit confusing. But as we see it, digitization is the first step where you actually ensure that you are recording data from your assets. Uh, and what, what we would want to have is availability. So data should be available. It should be accessible. And you should be able to trust it. Digitalization is something that you do once you have accomplished the first step, that is digitization. Once you have the data, you want to use it to improve your business processes. So what you will do is probably apply some automation. You will try to optimize your workflow. So spend less time on the things that you do daily by using the data that exists. Finally, once you have gone through the, the second step, you would want to digitally transform your business. That is, become more intelligent. So in this stage, you're not using the data to optimize your workflows, but actually using the data to make data-driven business decisions. Yeah, fancy terms. I like to show them, just so that uh, you feel that I'm fancy. Um, but when this question was asked 
So uh, this is the result from uh, MIT's Sloan Management Review. And uh, they asked people from different industries, what do they think will happen? Or the question specifically was, um, from one to five, how certain are you or how optimistic are you that AI will have an impact on your business or on your way of working? Um, when I looked at these results, I was kind of surprised and a bit disappointed because, well, technology and media, of course, they are the highest. It's expected, like Facebook and Google. And so they do a lot of things. But then I saw it energy. It was quite low, almost as bad as public sector. That was quite disappointing. And then I was like, OK, maybe that's the oil and gas people. They don't want to change. They are old. Um, so. I don't really know why that was, the, uh, uh, that was the case. So then I thought, I will be in a room of uh, very intelligent people who are in renewable energy industry, who are trying to solve many problems. So why don't I put the question out here? So if I can have the, the poll, so if, if you can open Slido. Oh, I didn't explain what one to five means, so just so that, uh, so one means that you don't feel that there is going to be any impact of AI on your daily operations. And five means that you feel very certain that AI will be able to help you in making better data-driven decisions. Well, I'm very happy that uh, most of the people feel that AI or machine learning will be able to help them in the future. And uh, I feel that at some point, maybe you think that green bite is going to be, uh, or green bite is the reason for this kind of feeling. But maybe so, or maybe not. But the point is that uh, if there is a feeling that it will help, then there will be efforts to make it possible. And that is where we should be. We should be, we should be optimistic that data has value and that it can deliver better business, driven, uh, business decisions. Can I get back to the slide? Yes. So why are we talking about this, right? I mean, yeah, OK. Um, things are working, so why do we need to bother? So if we look at this plot, this is the projections from DNVGL about how the energy electricity generation mix might look like in 2050. We are here somewhere. So we are around 2020. And this is the portion of uh, renewables that we have. And this is what is expected to be. So by 2050, it will, there is going to be an exponential growth, a lot in solar. And um, um, wind is also going to grow, but solar is going to be the biggest contributor. So the, the, the point is that maybe the problems that we have today are different than the, the, the problems that we will have tomorrow. So what can we do today to be better prepared for tomorrow? And what do we have today that will help us in doing that? Today, we have the data. We have enough experience to build upon. And that is where we feel that data is going to be a real asset that will help you to make better decisions. So let's not talk about the future. Let's talk about today. Um, what we can see is that there are a lot of venues for improvement. So if we look at the wind turbines, we see that turbines are non-operational for about 25 days per year on average. Um, Production-based availability is quite good. It's about 98% in general. But um, there are outliers. Solar, 85% max performance. Maybe we can improve there. But if we, if we look at wind, uh, let's say that we bring the production-based availability of those turbines, which are not at 98% to 98%. So all those assets which are not performing 98% production-based availability, if we push them to 98%, what we will get is 48 million euros more per year. That is about 3,267 euros per megawatt. And this is by doing nothing, just by ensuring that all the assets are performing at 98% production-based availability. So think about this. If, why, why stop at 98%, right? I mean, that is a number that the OEM has given you. But in theory, you can do better. 
So there is more to be gained here. So how do we at Greenbyte start solving this problem? Because this problem is going to get worse and worse as the amount of renewable increases in the energy mix. So we started with uh, looking at the turbine. So we, start, we said, OK, turbines are failing. There is some problem. We need to try to understand how we can ensure that these problems can be solved before they happen. So we looked at, um, we created Predict. And Predict basically is very, it's not very complex mathematical model. It's kind of in between statistics and machine learning. It's definitely not statistics. But uh, um, so what it says here is that you, we get uh, the data from the turbine. We store it in GEC. And uh, it's some training app, so it learns how the, the turbine operates. It runs um, the models every day. And then it creates alerts. And what you see in the uh, front end is precise information about which turbine and which component has a problem. Simple thing, a lot of people have done this. We are not the only one who have solved this problem, and we'll not be the only one solving future problems also. But the point is that it is possible, and uh, this is one of the things that we have done towards uh, trying to improve the availability for the turbines. And if you look at some cases, I will not spend too much time, because that's not the point of this presentation. Uh, this is one case where we detected a main bearing failure for our uh, customer. It saved them about 1,000 euros, 100,000 euros, uh, because this was in warranty. The, yeah, the timing was funny, because two months after they found this fault, the turbine was going out of warranty. And they were able to get the problem fixed or addressed by the OEM within the warranty period. So that was a big win for them. But uh, we have also been able to detect a lot of smaller failures, like this one, which uh, is a problem in the generator slip ring. Uh, and the customer using this replaced the slip ring before something happened. Well, now, uh, this is a bit of a conundrum, because it's good that they fixed it. But then I don't know how much they saved, because they fixed it before something failed. So I did some kind of uh, data science. I tried to compare a uh, similar fault in the same portfolio in another turbine. And then I estimated that it would have resulted in 17 days. Um, yeah, it, this detection and proactive maintenance reduced the downtime by 17 days to just six hours. Take these numbers with a grain of salt, because this is data science. Um, now, predict works by looking at individual turbine, right? Um, what if, now Greenbyte has, I think, around 8,000 turbines in the system. So what if we go out and look at all the turbines together? Can we do something from that? So here what we did was, let's say that uh, you have a lot of events, a lot of status codes coming in from the turbine. So what you want to do is understand how much each of these status code lasts. So how long does it last? How many times does it happen? So if I try to plot downtime per turbine hours for each status code, then I have something like this, um, a bunch of data points. And this is actually a real data from, uh, from a portfolio for a certain turbine type. Uh, and we have around 600 of these turbines. So this is data aggregated for 600 turbines. And what we can do then is, like for example, you have your portfolio, and you want to see how do you match up? How, does your, how do your turbines perform when we compare them to all the other similar type of turbines in the Greenback portfolio? What we can see is that, mm, OK, there are these two statuses which are clearly outliers for me. Now, the thing is that these, these statuses are, this one was um, some issue with the converter. If you don't have this information, it is difficult to understand that this is not normal. Maybe you have only this portfolio with this certain turbine type, and then this is how it has always been, always been operating. So you don't have any point to compare with. So by doing this, we can see that, uh, yeah, OK, there are some outliers, and we can address these issues with, our, uh, with the OEM. So in this particular case, for this example, the benchmark downtime was 11.4 hours per stop. 
whereas the portfolio downtime was 375 hours per stop. And it had happened one, almost five times more compared to the benchmark portfolio. So some information when you go out from um, individual turbine level to the macro level and try to use the strength of the portfolio. So now we have discussed a little few things about uh, what we can do with the data. And now comes the tricky part, like why, if this is so simple, why are we not doing more of it? The problem is that the, the data flow in the system has many points of failure. Um, so let's say that we have a problem in the sensor, so there is some kind of garbage data coming from the turbine. There is some lack of documentation, which unfortunately happens quite often. There is problem with connection, so we don't get the data. Uh, like Florian today mentioned, the worst kind of bad data is no data, and that is very true. Um, then we have, you know, software engineers always think that they build soft perfect software. I too think so. But what I have realized over time is that that's not true. We always introduce bugs inadvertently. Believe me, we don't do it on purpose. But there are bugs. Uh, we need to fix them. The point is that whenever you think about a solution, and we as uh, engineers and problem solvers, we tend to dive in to solve the problem. But we solve the problem, for sure. But then we, some, we tend to miss these issues. So for data to allow complete data-driven business decisions possible, it has to work seamlessly. So when you are going to design a system, you have to think about all these things. And that is what, in my opinion, is one of the biggest hurdles when it comes to real application of uh, data for all these kind of things. Um, but we have a lot of experience in Greenbyte, so that is good because uh, we come from very different backgrounds, and that actually helps a lot. Um, because I am supposed to be the most pessimistic person in my team, uh, so I'm kind of the, the balancer because all the other people in my team are very optimistic, and yeah, we can do it. So that helps to be pessimistic and trying to foresee problems in your own system before you can go out with a solution. OK, so if we come back to the previous slide that I had about uh, digitization, digitalization, and digital transformation. So how are we at Greenbyte helping you do this? So if we look at digitization, we see that the GET core service is basically us supporting you with uh, this step, where we, you know, one of the most underrated teams at Greenbyte, I think, is the integrations team, because they are really good at uh, integrating and uh, enabling the digitization. They, are, they have very good expertise, and kudos to them, uh, that you get all the data very quickly. Uh, I think Greenbyte record has been that we have installed the wind farm in two days, if I'm not wrong. Uh, that happens. It's very good. Uh, so what you get is you get a trustable API. And um, so that is digitization. And then the other services like automated reporting, monitoring solutions, dashboards, monitoring your KPIs, these are the things that enable you to reduce time. So you don't have to use Excel, right? So that's a good thing. That reduces time. And that is what you do with digitalization. There are some added advantages of predictive services, uh, so like Predict. Um, and there are the partner apps coming in that will add in even more information on top of this. So that is digitalization. And what we feel is that if you are very good in this, so you will start looking at the digital transformation step where you would want to use more information. Benchmarking, for example. So you would want to see in your portfolio which are the assets which are performing the best. Uh, and yeah, uh, drive more data-driven data business decisions. OK, so I'm running out of time. And this was my last slide. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs>